I call Amy Adams. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And uh, as uh, the previous speaker just said, it is a pleasure to take a, a call on this third reading of the estimates debate. And, sir, it... it, it uh, it's, it's, it's a useful time actually to stop and look back to, to the uh, 2008 election when this national-led government under John Key came to power. And so when New Zealand elected us, as they did overwhelmingly in 2008, uh, to lead this country through the recession, they did it, sir, on a platform of aspiration and ambition. Because we didn't get caught, we didn't get mired in the mudslinging and the negativity and the, and the, and the negative campaigning from the other side. We stood up, sir. John Key stood up. Our members stood up. And we said, actually, we do think New Zealand can do better than it's doing. We do have higher hopes for New Zealand. And we offered to New Zealand a positive vision for a way forward, a package of economic growth uh, that could lead them into the future. And so that was key to, it, to our plan, because we knew that to be ambitious for New Zealand, to deliver more for New Zealanders, we had to address the issue of economic growth, because that is what had been holding this country back for so long. And so economic growth, and, and let's take a moment to go over this, because listening to some of this debate this afternoon, it's very clear to me that members on the opposite side of the House neither know what it looks like, know what it means, or have any clue whatsoever how to deliver it. So let's just have a look at it for a minute. Economic growth, Mr Speaker, is important because it means jobs. That's what it means in a real sense. It means more Kiwis in work. It means higher incomes. It means lifting the incomes of New Zealand families so that they can get ahead under their own steam. They're not reliant on handouts from the state. They're not caught up in this culture of entitlement and what is the government providing for me. No, sir, we're saying work hard, get ahead, be responsible for your own destiny, and we will back you, sir. And that's what economic growth means to us. Economic growth means getting this country back to government surpluses. Now, why is that important, sir? Because when we get this economy back to government surpluses, then we have choices. We have choices to deliver the sorts of public services that New Zealanders deserve. We have the choices to deliver the best in education, the best in health. Order. Sorry to interrupt the member. Now, I've mentioned before that this barracking across the benches is unacceptable. Interjections are fine, <clears throat> and it's interjections over what the member is saying at the time. Please calm it down. Amy Adams. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I was talking about the fact, sir, that when we can get this economy back to surpluses, we have choice in what we can deliver. And that means we can deliver to the people of New Zealand the sorts of public services that they are entitled to expect, the sorts of education, health, law and order, the sorts of things we want for all of our citizens. To do that, sir, you have to get the economy into surplus. And under this budget that Bill English has delivered in 2010, we will now be returning to surpluses predicted in 2016. So that's three years ahead of the predictions we had just last year, and considerably better than the decade of deficits right. that the Labour Party left us as their legacy. This is a government, sir, that understands you have to earn money before you spend it. Pretty simple lesson. Most Kiwi families get it. Most businesses get it. But Labor never understood, sir, that you have to earn the money before you spend it. They just kept spending it. Sir, as a country, New Zealand had been living beyond its means for far, far too long. We cannot continue to just assume the money will come from that magic ATM machine in the sky. We understand, sir, that governments have no money. There is no such thing as government money. What we spend is the taxpayers' money, the hard-earned money of New Zealanders who contribute to this country and its prosperity. And we understand, sir, if you don't back those people, if you don't back those workers, if you don't back those businesses, if you don't back every man and woman and child who's working hard to get this country ahead, then we will never prosper as a country. It's a fundamental truth that Labour don't get. Spending actually is the only thing that the Labour government was ever any good at. National has always been seen as the party you turn to when you want sensible economic management. And that's exactly what New Zealand wanted in 2008. That's exactly what they were asking for. And that, sir, is why they delivered this John Key-led national government the strong, overwhelming mandate that they did. We understood, Mr Speaker, that recovery 
and then economic growth was going to come from addressing the imbalances that had been hamstringing our economy for so long. The imbalances that meant that under Labor's watch there had been no net new jobs created in agriculture or manufacturing since 2002. For the Labor Party now to cry crocodile tears when they presided over an economy where there were no net new jobs created in agriculture and manufacturing the backbone of our economy for the last six years of their government is an absolute uh, tragedy, sir. It is an absolute shame and a farce. We knew that to get growth, we would have to rein in expenditure. You can't keep spending more than you earn. We had to get a handle on expenditure. We had to better manage our balance sheets. $217 billion of government assets. If we don't manage our assets far more prudently, this country will never recover. We had to, Mr Speaker, ensure better value for money. It's not good enough to simply throw money into a health system that saw expenditure double under Labor, and yet the amount of elective surgery per capita fall. That's what that government did, Mr Speaker. They put twice the money into the health system and outputs fell. They thought, just keep throwing money into the pit without any sort of value for money assessment, and that's got to be good. Well, that might be fine if you had money to throw around, but they were spending more than they had. It simply wasn't sustainable. If we're going to get growth in this economy, Mr Speaker, we have to encourage our export sector. We have to get behind our farmers. We have to get behind our manufacturers. We have to get behind our innovative New Zealanders who are out there working hard. And that's what this government is focused on. That's what Budget 2010 is all about. We understand, Mr Speaker, that growth is a partnership between government and the private sector. That's because governments don't create jobs, actually. Governments don't create jobs. Businesses create jobs. Well, do. Government don't pay taxes. New Zealanders pay taxes. Governments have to support businesses. We have to support Kiwis. We have to help them to invest and to grow. And we have to not make their lives harder and harder and harder. Now, Mr Speaker, facing, the, facing the, the situation that was in front of us, there was no single solution that was going to magic away our problems. And what we know, actually, from the debate in this House, is that Labor have spent the last 20 months <coughs> waiting for a bill to come onto the order paper that said, the solution to all our problems, Bill. The solution to all our problems, Bill, because that must be the answer. And they haven't seen it, so they figure there is no plan. Well, do you know what that tells me, Mr Speaker? That tells me that they simply don't understand what economic growth is, what delivers it. They have no idea how to roll out a strong economy for this country. And every time they say in this House there is no plan, all that tells me is they don't get it. They have got no clue. They wouldn't recognise a growth agenda if it jumped up and bit them. So that tells us, Mr Speaker, that if they were in charge of this country right now, we would be continuing the downward spiral that they put us on in their nine years in office. There are so many elements to our economic plan. In 20 months, the sheer volume of what this government has delivered to turn this economy round is staggering. If you just focus on the six main points, sir, you've got the biggest tax reform in 25 years designed to encourage hard work, decourage consumption and back New Zealanders who want to get ahead. We've got one of the biggest infrastructure packages New Zealand has seen, and we've been starving for infrastructure growth in this country. Ten billion on roads alone, one and a half billion on broadband, another 300 million in rural broadband. Better, smarter public services, Mr Speaker, you are seeing consistently rolled out from this government, and better value for money for our spending as well. We're seeing a focus on lifting education standards. We're actually saying it's not good enough that 20% of our kids can't read and write. Sorry to interrupt the honourable member, but the time has come to me to leave the chair. This debate is interrupted. I shall resume the chair at 7.30.